Jay Stono here. Today, we're looking at dredging. We're on North Padre Island, and we've got a crew out here that's dredging Packery Channel, and then they're putting it on the south side of Packery Channel. And you'll see all these birds out here, and you see all the dredge material coming out, and you might be thinking, man, what in the world is going on there? And is this harmful to the environment? Uh, what are they, are they, is it helpful? You know, how are we gonna benefit, you know, us being here on the island? Well, uh, I guess there's a couple things. Uh, short term, you'll see that, you can imagine, what if you're a ghost crab or something like that, and you've got your hole on the beach? What is all this material gonna do? Uh, what if you're a little uh, worm or a clam or, you know, something that lives in the sediment where all this stuff's coming out? There are going to be some <clears throat> short-term impacts, definitely. But long-term, and so think about, you know, whenever they turn these uh, dredges off, look a month, two months down the road, a wider beach will be here. Uh, it will be bleached out. The smell will be gone. Because whenever, uh, if you've come out here yet to look at this, uh, you know, they're dredging up sediments that haven't been um, oxygenated in a while. And it uh, is pretty like a sulfur type smell is what you smell. And then real dark water going out into the surf. And so you'll see the waves coming in and they look dark and everything. Now, um, so long term, we'll have a wider beach. It will, the, the sand will bleach out. It will look nice. The animals will come back. There actually are some animals that are in here already. Um, you've always probably seen whenever you're looking at the swash zone, which is where the waves come in, and then right up on the shoreline where it starts getting dry, as you'll see these little bitty holes. Uh, most of those are ghost shrimp. And so I, you know, walking even further back up in here, I can still see that ghost shrimp have new sand coming up, you know, so they don't seem to be as impacted as much. Um, the material they're putting out here looks to have a lot of um, trash in it. So there are people out here that are picking up trash as well, uh, which is good. Um, get that out of the environment so the birds and sea turtles and things like that don't eat it. Um, but um, I, I know of an expert uh, here at the Heart Research Institute that deals with looking at, you know, what, what are the impacts of beach renourishment? Uh, he's a geologist and uh, he can actually look at, you know, where the sand might be going. And so I want to be able to talk to him uh, about what this really means for us here on North Padre Island. You know, how, how long could we expect this sand to be here? Uh, what might it be like uh, over time, uh, in a year from now or something like that? You know, what are the real benefits? So uh, let's get off the beach, let's go to the Heart Research Institute and talk to this expert and see what he says about it. Stay tuned. Okay, so we're off the beach, we're at the Heart Research Institute. I did want to show you something real quick. Uh, if anybody's been here to the Heart Research Institute before and you've seen this sculpture out here, um, it looks like a big cube and uh, it's called Year in Sand and the artist that did all this was uh, Greg Ruder and if you look inside of here you're gonna see see if I can stick this in here you're gonna see this tube that comes down that's actually a ghost crab tube that was uh, there wasn't a crab in there but it, it shows you kind of from the surface all the way down to where they burrow in, uh, way down in the sand and where they live and everything. Um, but this is from the Padre Island National Seashore. So I just thought that was cool since we were mentioning about the dredging and impacts uh, to ghost crab and other things that live out there. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna go inside of the Heart Research Institute here. I'm gonna introduce y'all to Dr. Jim Jabot um, and he, he does a lot of mapping. And so I want him to be able to talk to you about uh, not only the impacts of dredging and why they're doing it and maybe some of the history of Packery Channel uh, but then also uh, get him to talk about some of the other projects he has. He has projects all up and down the Texas coast mapping uh, changes from sea level rise and storm surge. 
And so us living on the island, we definitely want to know that very important information. And he puts this out here so that we can make better decisions on uh, where to develop, where not to develop. So uh, let's go in and talk to him and see what he has to say. Let's go. Well, let's take a, a quick look at where it is, where we are on the Texas coast. And we're looking at a map of the entire Texas coast here uh, from uh, the border with Louisiana up there and then the border with Mexico down here. And Packery Channel is right here, of course, out in front of Corpus Christi Bay. And um, we're looking at um, the, the dredging that you saw earlier um, which is in progress right now, and it hadn't been dredged in about 10 years. And Packery Channel is a is a, an inlet that was opened in 2006 by dredging, and then the jetties were installed so that boats could pass through there, and also so that water could flow back and forth and flush and improve the water quality in the bay behind it. And, however, sand is constantly moving along that part of the coast. And right here it's moving um, net to the south, but also it moves to the north. But um, it um, fills in that hole. It, it likes to fill in the channel that, that we created there back in 2006. And once in a while, to keep that inlet operating to keep those tidal currents flowing through it so it keeps flushing out the uh, the water and also some of the sand you have to dredge it and this was always known that it would have to be done uh, when we got involved in this and so that's what they're doing now is, is dredging it and it should be uh, taken back down to, to depth probably about eight feet depth and then it'll be a number of years before it needs to be done again. But that all depends on how much sand is moving back and forth here and might fill in. And that depends on storms and cold fronts and the kind of weather that we have. And this map actually represents um, a lot of work that we do in this lab. And we go back in time and with old uh, photographs and maps and compile them into a GIS and see how things have changed through time. Uh, where the shorelines used to be, where they are now, uh, the marshes, how they've come and gone, seagrass, tidal flats, and things like that. And we take that information and we model forward in time so that we can make a projection on how things will change in the future, which is really the, the key uh, thing that we all like to know, is this island going to survive uh, as sea level rises and storms continue to um, impact it. And so that's the kind of thing that we're addressing and making projections on all up and down the Texas coast. Okay, wow. Okay, I'm glad we came to talk to uh, Dr. Jabot because uh, maybe I'll think about selling my house now on, on North Padre Island. No, I'm kidding. But, uh, but the information that they're able to develop in showing us, you know, where there's the sea level rise is going to be uh, by 2100. You know, some of those types of things are very important for planners and uh, developers and, and the county and even the city. Uh, so I'm glad they're doing that work. Uh, for as far as the dredging goes, it sounds like uh, there are some short-term impacts, and there's uh, uh, long-term. It's going to be better uh, for all of us out on the island. So, uh, and it's something that's needed. Apparently, they've been planning for it since 2006, whenever the jetty was open. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and head back to the beach uh, now that we're done at the Heart Research Institute, and uh, we'll catch you on the next beachcombing episode. Talk to y'all later. Bye.